Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling. I am your host, JP John Paz. With me today is a very special guest, a former five-time WWE Women's Champion, a former Divas Champion, and of course, a former three-time TNA Knockouts Champion, Miss Mickey James. Mickey, welcome to the two-man hello, power hello. trip. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You've got so much going on. Like, I don't even know. Where do you want to start? You want to start with the uh, July 10th. You've got a big country music uh, resurgence, if you will. You're starting again. Oh, you want to, yeah. <laughs> well, we just, obviously, I just released uh, my latest single, Grown Ass Woman, and I released it with Chapel Heart. And it's doing really well, but I haven't played out a music show since prior to COVID. My last show was like when I opened for Big and Rich back in my hometown. But um, yeah, the single's doing really great. It's getting a lot of airplay. It's just, you know, really just starting to pick up. And those girls are incredible. So they're going to kill it. Like I'm telling you, they're about to blow up. So the fact that I was able to now be their friends and get to know them on a personal space and we're shooting the music video um, next week and stuff. But that's been really, really fun to be able to write and like just record and, and kind of get that synergy off of them. But yeah, so my first show back since COVID back in my hometown at the Canal Club. In Richmond, Virginia, July 10th, right? Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Is that a good market for country music? Seems like it would be. Um, well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of where I grew up. Obviously, that's downtown in Richmond, but I grew I, I listened to everything when I grew up, but country definitely seemed to be the one that resonated with me when as far as some of how I wrote, how I would tell my stories, you know, like I kind of that was it just felt more authentic to me. Uh, but yeah, it definitely has a huge country base. Yeah. Were you always like a, a good singer? I'm just always curious. It's like, okay, she's a wrestler, but oh, wow, where did this come from? She's a good country music star. Like she's oh, a good dude. singer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't ever, I was never like professionally music trained and I don't think it's, I don't think I'm a Carrie Underwood or Faith Hill by any means. Don't get me wrong. I think that I have a unique sound and I think my songs tell a unique story, right? Like, um, and for me, it's an outlet, right? So I, uh, would sing in like the choir every now and then or sing in chorus. We, when you'd have to do, we did chorus. I played the violin for like five years. I think music, I wanted to sing. I always wanted to sing, but I just didn't think I was very good at it. That would be, that was the reality. It's like, I, and I never, because I was so invested in my horses at the time, I just never really, aside from just singing on my own privately, I know, and this is pre social media where you would just get on, you could do it on Instagram live and like really get known that way. I think a lot of people are finding that there's a lot of stars coming up out of nowhere that they never even expected because of the power of social media. But um, yeah, I just didn't think I was that good. And, you know, but I think that in, um, I did, I've taken vocal training since starting to just kind of be able to learn how to move my notes better and stuff like that with um, Ron Browning, who uh, he does uh, Winona Judd and he does the, them so he's also he worked with a bunch of different people you know but yeah i don't know if i'm at you know when you say oh you're i think i'm an acquired taste you know mm. some people think i'm really great and probably some people don't like my music at all and that's just music in general right like yep. not everybody like but i hope you like my songs and i think i tell a decent story and i try to tell a decent story in my songs like i tell the story in my in the ring so maybe <laughs> Was it always an aspiration to sing or did it just oh, kind of? Yeah. Well, no, I used to record myself. I would record myself in my room, singing in my little microphone, in my thing. I just, you know, I just didn't really, I don't know why I never actually, I think because I just didn't think it possible for me because I wasn't, I recognized that I wasn't as powerful as a singer when I look at, at these Mariah Carey's and Whitney Houston's who that's who I would sing with, you know, most of the time or, you know, and even in the stars and then I'm going like, wow, that, that seemed like such an unobtainable thing for me. You know, like, I don't know why I think, because I looked at those as like mega superstars in the sense of like, that's so cool. And the power of their voice and to be able to move someone to the point of tears with the, with their voice and with the message that they're singing, like that was just super powerful to me. And I think that's also why I found wrestling or found myself in wrestling because I was equally a wrestling fan in that same capacity, but it was more in the acting and the, and the theater of it all and the characters and the stories that they would tell in that. And even that I felt was super unobtainable for me until I found myself in wrestling. Right. Like, but looking at it from a fan's perspective, I was like, 
these guys are larger than life. It's like they're superhuman. Like, how do they even find these people? You know, you say these things as a kid. Oh, I want to be this thing. I don't want to be that thing. But then all these no's in life, right? Talk you back off of it. Like, so that's my newest realization is to like try to wish like you wished when you were a kid, because I think that you, you had zero reservations of how big, how unlimited you would reach yep. for, you know? So, yeah. Did wrestling kind of like launch you into country music or was it always kind of there? Or was it like somebody said, Hey, you're so famous and you want to sing, let's do it. Like how, well, did, how, no. how did you make the jump? No, that was actually the opposite of that. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. It was more of, um, I had been sitting on songs and I had been writing and writing and um, I've always wrote, I wrote in school. I studied, I did like creative and novel writing and um, you know, I, I, it was, it's weird to think back. Cause I was like, that was art, art. And a lot of that stuff is where I was always more focused in my studies and school and stuff. And um, I even got accepted into like this literary arts college that was when I was like 16 and I was just, I was so young and my mom's like, no, I'm not sending you to, you know, Maine at 16 years old and you're going to miss your proms. You're going to miss and you're 16 and no. <laughs> and I'm like, <Right>. okay, <laughs> but it was, it's just weird. I just, I, I think because of storytelling and maybe because I'm, you know, creative people, you know, you kind of live in your head and like think of all these things. And I just had to get them out and get them on paper and just write them. And so I have notebooks and stuff of like, just jot it down ideas or, or um, and what I found is a lot of times, and then that was when music really spoke to me because I, you know, we travel so much with wrestling and you're in the car and you're driving. Um, I'm singing all the time in the car for three hours straight yeah. to all my favorite songs. And I found myself because then, you know, you, you get bored of the same songs and there's all that stuff. So I would turn the radio off and I would just, you know, for an hour and I would just think of all these things things and I would like speak them into my phone just so I wouldn't forget them so I could go back and elaborate it on them later. And then even when I was like started to write and I found like myself writing in a, like a lyrical form, more of like a melody. And it just really kind of kept sparking in that passion of like, you really should do it. Just go do it. And I think that was the one thing that I always thought I couldn't do. And I'm, and so I had an opportunity then and I go like, I've had this collection of songs. And even if there's just three of them that are halfway decent and then I could just lay down in the studio, it was more of a project for me. It started, if I could, I just want to do it to say that I did it so I can just release this. Like, I didn't think I was capable of doing it, that fear. And in that, you know, a whole, like I found myself in Nashville more. I found myself working with songwriters that, um, you know, really, uh, wanted to help me because, and then it was my first producer, Kent Wells, who goes like, I think like you got some really great stuff here. And I think on, you know, you sound so different and your story's so different that I would personally like to take a chance on you. And, and the sense of like, let's do this album. Let's look for music around town. Let's put three or four of your songs on it. Let's just do an album. And, you know, Kent's amazing. And he works, he's the guitar player for Dolly like he's just incredible and he knows this. And so I just trusted him with my first album. And I think that the ability and for him to have faith in me and say, Hey, let's do that. Like really gave me the confidence to go like, okay, I can do this. And I really want to, and it's so fun and so different and, and such a release for me. But as far as that crossover, it's not like that. Like, I think that people had these perceptions of like, Oh, it's going to, she's going to be super successful in music because it's just going to cross over. But it doesn't, I mean, you look at Dwayne Johnson and how he, and how long it took for him to cross over into the acting world and get taken seriously. Like I've been grind, like doing the music grind for real for like 10 years on the album level, which is zero time when you think about it in any artistry kind of space. But um, even before then singing and writing in my own personal, you know, but it's cool. It's just, it's, cool because I think that at first people were like, Oh, that's that wrestler girl that sings. Or like when I would go to do media and stuff and be like, Oh, this song's good. And then, you know, this song's good or, but they, it wasn't like a taken seriously as an artist. Like it wasn't like that kind of, it was cool that I was doing it, but it was a crossover thing. And I think now people now 10 years into it and still working. And now this next album coming out is all my own stuff, like all original stuff. Um, I think it's just, and just building those relationships and working with people, you know, I've just 
made more friends and I think I've gotten more respect for doing it the grassroots way, but that's the only way, like that's how I did it in wrestling. So that's what worked for me. And so that's, I think that I, to be taken seriously, I had to do it the same way in music. So. Yeah. Is it almost like hurt that you're a wrestler sometimes? Like, oh, this wrestler getting into like that's nobody takes you seriously at first, like that kind of thing. Yeah, I think so, but I don't. Th I don't think that that's exclusively to wrestling. I think anyone, and and I don't know why this is, but I think anyone who is super successful in anything, like whether it be baseball or acting or anything like that, once they're super successful for th for them, like in one thing, I also think it's hard for the public to then go like. Oh, but now they want to be this other thing. You know, they want to do this too, but they're really good at why don't why can't you just be that? Like that's what we love you for. Like, I don't want you to do this other thing. Like, you know what I mean? So there's a little bit of yeah. that as well. And you I mean, you've we've seen it with from, you know, baseball and basketball for actors and and actors crossing over as musicians or musicians trying to cross over into acting. And it's it's really unique to see because I'm like, well, if they're really good at it and they, they love it, then I hope they are awesome. And I hope they are successful at it. And that's just my mentality. But I think that's a lot of this, the perception too. It's hard to accept someone in something else. Once you've defined them in this one lane, you know? Yep. My, Michael Jordan went to go play baseball. Everyone was like, what the hell? Come what on. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you doing? You're so successful and you're like the man, like, why are you going over here? No, we want you right here. And yeah. Yeah. And it was hard for him to be taken seriously or like get the, they, they were so much heat around that, you know? Yeah. I mean, even Tim Tebow on like a, a much lesser scale, but he's successful in football. Then he tries to play baseball. People are like, Oh, what is he doing? Oh, yeah. are you crazy. Yeah. Right. Right. So now as far as empower, like the name says right there, empower, you're going to be <laughs> rest. You're yeah. going to be wrestling uh, coming up. We'll talk about empower, but you are going to be wrestling for the 73rd anniversary oh, yeah. show too. I did. I just announced that on Instagram live yesterday or the yes. other day. Uh, you know, I think because I put in a lot of energy and I'm putting so much focus into this empower. And then I go like this, you know, trading in my wrestling boots for a business suit was been a real unique place to be in, you know, because I'm really trying to sit back and take a big look at the whole, the whole, um, picture, you know, I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Um, but, and I'm really excited about it, but I want to take it seriously. And I feel like, oh, and then I was like, well, are you going to wrestle on it? And people were asking me, are you going to wrestle on it? And I was like, I don't know how I can, I do not know how I can present the show to the best of my abilities. If I'm also then thinking about this match that I'm going to have and making sure that I put that on for the best of my, you know what I mean? In the same night, I just think that it kind of, and it, this show, the women's, you know, empower is not just about me. It's about all the women, right? Like it's about women's wrestling for me and like what that means to me and you know who I think those torch bearers are going to be going into the future and so I um, am super super excited about that and I'm super excited to be able to be given the keys in a space of that to try to let my vision of what that looks like you know come to life and I know that this is the first of many and and I hope that it's amazing I know it's going to be amazing and I hope it delivers on every level um, but it's a it's a huge responsibility, you know, and I, and I'm definitely like, sort like have my team of women around me that I'm like, I lean on them to help me make the right decisions. And, you know, we got some cool people and some cool stuff get, like involved and I'm going to start rolling that out, um, over the next coming weeks, but it's just been amazing. And it's been, I think I've quietly sat back and watched the growth of NWA, um, since my husband's been there and, what they've done and to be able to bring this brand back and the way they deliver the product is so unique. And it's really not, when you think about it, it's not unique. It's just the wrestling that I fell in love with. It's that that's kind of, it's what's old is new, but it's, it's like that modern day delivery to that presentation to that old school wrestling feel style. And I just love it so much. Like I think it's so different and it's so unique and powerful and it really, uh, is, has the ability to showcase different talents that perhaps got overlooked, you know, because they didn't fit the specific mold or, it, you know, whatever the case may be. And it gives everybody, you know, somewhat give them a unique place to really shine and show all of their strengths, you know? So I, I think what they've done with different characters that people had even forgotten about to build these like really emotional stories, those 10 pounds of gold series and all that stuff. I was like, this is so different and it's cool. And it's, 
you know, I want to watch this, you know, cause it makes me feel. And I think it, it, with everything and all television and everything, I'm looking at it and I go, we're moving so far away from that reality television space of, especially I think with anything in the last two years, that's the thing that's been the key element of the change is the authenticity of everything of like being able to truly relate to the audience. And I think people just don't want trash TV anymore or like fake reality or any of that. They want to be emotionally connected to the stories that they're investing in on television. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool thing to be able to try to do, you know, and if I can do that for women's wrestling too, that would be really, really cool. Um, but yeah, as part of this whole weekend, because I go, it's a, such a huge weekend. It's honestly pro my first, you know, real appearance at NWA at the at the showcase as in itself. And I think, you know, I I was sitting back thinking, and I was like, you know, with everything that Billy's doing for me and to help me and giving me this platform and like really just kind of saying, this is your thing. Here you go. Uh, I'm like, I would really love my first wrestling appearance. If I'm going, you know, I was like, cause I was going back and forth on the wrestling. I'm like, not because I'm not good at it anymore, but I was just like, oh, does it mean the same? Is it the, you know? And I'm like, no, I am still good at it. And uh, I would love to lace my boots up again and actually kick some ass out there. And um, so, yeah, I just announced that I would have my first match back at NWA 73. So where I'm looking for an opponent, obviously, or Billy, and I've left that, that key in Billy's hands, you know, as to far, find, like, let's find a really killer opponent. And I'm excited. I'm super excited. It's going to be who, good. Who do you think of possible opponents? Um, you know, I don't know because I'm like, well, if we go within the NWA, there's, um, Kylie Ray now. Um, I think that obviously there is, uh, Camille as the champion, but me as a businesswoman go, She's aligned with my husband on, and, and she's the champion and he's the champion. And as a businesswoman, I don't need to, I don't need to do like, I think I like Camille. She comes over the house. She comes swimming at the house, you know, like we're all friends. So when it came time to go after the championship, I would just really like to have one of those matches with like a Thunder Rosa or like with a, a Serena or someone who's really like that type of of girl of today that people really have their eyes on and put on a hell of a match and that's all have like a really amazing showcase and so whoever that might be i mean there's diana there's so many girls that are i mean ring of honor is getting ready to do that tournament you know that are getting showcased there there's women that i haven't even stepped in the ring with that have really you know risen up in the last five years since i've been back and and on the road and stuff because of this whole you know renaissance of women's wrestling so it's it's kind of cool to see there's so I, I there's so much people that i haven't even seen yet so we'll see who do you suggest do you have any suggestions i was gonna say serena because she seems like as, as serena deep as far as everybody right now she seems to be uh the top of her game more so than anybody else i've seen i mean anybody they throw her in there with reho on aew oh, good yeah. match thunder roast a good match i mean she did a good match just one match after another she's been having uh, she's on a roll yeah, I know. And I'm so happy for her. And I would have said Serena. I know I've wrestled Serena, but Ser I think everybody knows that my Serena is always my go-to because I think she's the greatest women's wrestler out there right now. Um, and I've always felt that way. I always have a you know kindred spirit with Serena because I remember her when she first moved to Louisville and OVW when she was just a kid. She moved from Virginia. So there was already like a little bond right there because we're both Virginia girls. And then I've just loved her from day one. She's always had so much passion and raw talent and just, she just, it just clicked right away the whole time, you know, and even at, uh, when I first got called up the first time and that's when she was really starting to get her. And I just watched her grow from there to debuting on television and getting her head shaved and that whole space. And I felt like even there, she never got a chance because I felt then she was better than a lot of the girls, most of the girls there. And, and definitely almost probably better than me. I don't know. Hmm. I don't maybe, know. maybe we'll see. No, maybe we'll but see. At any rate, I really think that of Serena. I've always held her because it wasn't just about the in, like it was the details and the character in the, in the in-between stuff. She could just wrestle, you know, like, and, and I just appreciated that so much because that's what I always, I wanted to be able to go in there and go, you know, and still do all check all the girl boxes, but when it came down to bell time, like you could go with anyone. And um, 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really, really cool like to just watch her journey because I think that she's been through it too, where she kind of thought, uh, maybe it's just, you know, after after the first run and then like, uh, it just seems like a struggle. And because she never got a chance to showcase her wrestling ability on television. So people didn't know. And then, you know, then to come back for like the classic and then be a trainer. And then I'm like, well, you're 30. She's like, you know, she, she was 30 and the girl, even all the girls she was training were her age and, and older or like right in that space. So, but I'm like, your head and shoulders above, you know what I mean? All right. You're already ready. Like this, like there's so much to do with, with her. And I just, for whatever reason, I think because she's so sweet, her genuine are her genuine. So I think that maybe until you see her like live and watch her work, like people don't understand that how because she doesn't feel dangerous when you talk to her as the real person serena because she's got such a good soul like she's just so nice like we'd say too nice for wrestling sometimes right that was always what lisa said about molly holly she's so nice she's too nice for wrestling you know like yep. um but just mega talented and i just look at serena in that same bracket like she's so freaking good and i'm so happy that she's finally getting a chance to really showcase you know, really showcase why she was always put in those positions to help level everybody up and take them to the next level because she was already there the whole time. You know, it's just, yeah. seems like you're almost hesitant at first to wrestle. Did somebody have twist your arm or you, did you always no, want to No, I think I was just hesitant. No, I think it's more of, uh, that's just an ego thing probably, if I was to be mm. honest with myself. I think it was more of, I had a, a, a plan for how I would kind of go out or do that or hang up my boots and transition into more of a backstage role not because I, I wanted to still wrestle or whatever but it's just more of I, I i had felt that energy coming to me in the sense of like i should consider cr a crossover so and and feeling that like put not pressure i would say but <clears throat> feeling that idea sparked in my head like hey kind of maybe we should think about something like this and like moving forward which is awesome because it's it's gives you longevity in the wrestling business. And I'd always wanted to cross over and work behind the scenes whenever that was, you know. Um, but I was also cognizant of the fact that I didn't want to do them both at the same time. You know, like I think that you kind of have to tie a bow on one thing before you can fully commit to the other, you know, because otherwise your your purpose or there's always this weird, oh, but maybe I could insert myself here. Or what if I did, you know, there's, so then it kind of blurs the lines a bit. And, and I know player coach works, but it also kind of, I think can change the business a little bit on your end, you know? So, yeah. oh my God. Apologize. All right. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Rude. Um, yeah. So I wasn't, so I think it was that. And then since I had not gotten that opportunity, then I go like, well, is coming back and, and like, how does that look? And I didn't want it to be like, oh, you know, have your last match on the indies or whatever in some random, because I had already considered that before I went back to WWE. I think I'd gotten in a space of like, I think it's time to transition and move before I got, it was just weird that I came to that conversation with myself before I got called back for the match at TakeOver and stuff. I'd already had that internal conversation and talked to Nick about it and go like, okay, well, so if we just wrap up this and then I'll just take appearances for here on out. I'm not even taking wrestling bookings right now. I'm not taking any independent, I'll, obviously signings and music bookings and appearances. I'm doing a couple comic cons and stuff like that. But um, I kind of already made that decision. And then I was just like, I just want it to mean something. That's all. Like if I'm, if I do it, I just want it to mean something. And I think because I had wanted it to mean something for a minute, you know, and I think that if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. And I think I have the opportunity at NWA to do it right and to be able to have uh, a really cool opponent and have some time and kick some ass. And, you know, that's all because I still love wrestling. Yeah. That's why I love it. I love it so much. There's nothing like the adrenaline from the crowd and the rush and all that stuff. And, you know, so. Yeah. Did did you have the idea for the all women's pay per view, or did Billy have the idea for the pay per view? Billy had already known. Well, you know, I, you, Billy is my friend. You know, Billy's been my. I've known Billy for twenty years since like way back TNA and Nashville fairgrounds days. You know, was when I first met Billy, and I think that you know, even obviously because the NWA is 
Nick is so heavily involved and the conversations with Billy. So I would talk, you know, he, and I think that was a very, it was very apparent that this was something that I had tried to do and wanted to do, you know, and, and really had, had tried to push it through and, and go through different channels and talk to people about it. And it was just kind of, um, and I understand it's not like me being like, Oh, but it is one of those things of like, I did, I do believe in it. And I think that there is a, a genuine audience for it. And it could have been like some really, a really great space. And I still think it's a really great space to build females. And it, because otherwise women get like one or two matches on the card where like, and I recognize that all of my successes, failures, all of that came at the hands of men in the sense, because that's who's written the storylines and done all of those things for years. And so I am still very, very grateful for it. But I think that we've evolved to a time now where um, uh, let's, they're not always uh, authentic to females because they can't see it from a female's perspective. So I just think that it's we're in a space where we can see wrestling for the first time from a woman's perspective of a per woman, you know, kind of helping guide what that looks like to then bring back we talk about a female audience like oh we don't the demographics and the audience because i've recognized that most of our audience is a male audience if anything more than ever we've opened up to like the lgbtq plus community to you know women in general especially like just trying to capture that female audience but i think it's because we've never really gone after them like we've never really targeted them because we've never really related to them and so hopefully that's what i can do with this is be able to bring back that female audience that used to come to the shows with their husband and their kids. And, and, you know, they all enjoyed it as a family experience, you know, uh, because I think that, you know, if the female characters are not relatable to the women, then it's, it's hard to get them to, yep. you know, understand or, or like care. Yeah. With that pay-per-view, obviously, at Wrestling at the Chase, St. Louis, a lot of tradition there. I mean, that's pretty damn cool if you just think about the wrestling tradition and who used to wrestle you know, in St. Louis and Wrestling at the Chase. Pretty uh, pretty awesome, just from an old-school perspective. It's such, it's so, so awesome. And and we've been talking, and Billy had been talking about um, going on the road, and because and, we've been filming in Georgia and Atlanta, or they've been filming, I should say, um, in Georgia and Atlanta, but I... Uh, I think that this, the way this happened, um, it just kind of fell all fell beautifully together because, you know, people have been trying to get into a chase ballroom for like 40, almost 40 years. And they just were not interested. They didn't want wrestling there. They didn't, they just weren't interested. And I think for us to be able to go back 30 some years later since wrestling at the chase, uh, is huge. It's huge to the point where like they had local, like the local news come down and, do live from the chase ballroom historical NWA is coming back for the first time. It's like, this is a huge thing for St. Louis. It's for a huge thing for us. And I think the energy, especially coming up out of this pandemic through the ability to run and be in a space that, that is so historic to go back for the anniversary show and NWA 73 was already going to be huge, but now to do it as a double night, you know, double feature event, like, and, and for the first time ever NWA to host their first female and for them such a historic, I think, um, you know, alliance and, and really like the foundation of the wrestling business as a whole to then step up and say, Hey, we'd like a space for women to be showcased as well. I think that's a pretty powerful thing. Um, to, you know, and for me, I look at it too. And I go like, it's really ironic to me that it took Billy Corgan, who is, you know, mostly known for his, his success in the music industry and who has pretty much brought, like they've brought, the NWA back to life kind of together and, and done all of this, you know, and, and really gotten all this steam behind the NWA to then go like to me, who most people know me from wrestling and all that and my career there, but have aspirations and like this love for the music and have been grinding and stuff to go like, well, actually here, Mickey, like I believe in this and I believe in you because he knows me and he knows like how I think and trusts me. So he's like, I think that we could do this. And I think that, let's do it. And I'm like, it's just ironic to me. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, right? Like, it's just never what I, I, I would have never written that ever. 
and I, I just interviewed him probably about a month ago or so. We're talking, I just can't believe how much of an old school fan he is. I mean, the tradition of, of Sam Mushnick and the NWA and, and obviously Harley race who Nick knew very well. I mean, mm-hmm. just like all kind of came together. It's just very interesting how big of an old school fan he was. Yeah. And his synergy and love for the business. And I guess, yeah, even when I met him way back when I was like, I didn't realize that he did love the wrestling business so much. Like I just remember him being there and I was just like, I was like, cool. Because I'm like, a Smashing Pumpkins fan. I'm like, he's awesome. Like, that's cool. I didn't realize how much he truly like loved the business until like as we got to know each other and would have conversations about wrestling. I'm like, actually, he really he gets it. He does understand, and he actually does love the business. And like, even seeing you know what they've done with the NWA since then, I'm like, this is really unique and it's powerful. And I think it's a different you know a different way that wrestling hasn't really been seen in so long that people are like. Like that whole what's old is new and what's yep. if it's broke, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it kind of thing. So, you know, we we spend so much time like trying to, I think, be uh, taking legitimately in all these other spaces that we forget at the core of it is still it's wrestling. And it's about these characters and these stories and this this cool um, thing that makes everybody kind of just love it. And that's what like throws it back to, I think a lot of our audience too goes, these are, these are people who go like, I want my son to watch this because this was the experience my dad and I had, or, you know, whatever. Cause this is, this is wrestling to me, you know? So yeah. 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 Very, very, very cool. Very different too. Cause obviously there has, like you said, Chase Ballroom, there hasn't been wrestling there decades. Yes. Yeah. It's really, really cool. And the fact that we were able to get that and get it for the four days. So we're doing, you know, obviously empower the first night on the 28th, 29th the anniversary show nwa 73 and then the next two days we're doing live tell the tapings we're doing tell the tapings from the chase ballroom as well um on the monday and the tuesday so and i think that they're we're doing tickets and all that stuff for those as well um and different kind of packages and stuff so it's going to be a really fun event and a fun weekend and just a fun time for anyone in and around and for a love for the business as a whole in St. Louis that weekend. So that's what I'm really excited about. And I think that the fact that the city is excited about it as well and just kind of buzzing about it, it just, you know, speaks volumes. Yeah, absolutely. Now yeah. you mentioned takeover back, I guess it was 2016 ish with, with Oscar. How did that all happen? Cause you know, you said you were looking maybe, ah, eh, maybe I'm done, but then all of a sudden, yeah. is it like the triple H thing? Is he calling you like, Hey, we want you to wrestle. Um, it was actually Mark Carano that called me first. Um, but I, you know, I had went into like, obviously I'd been back. I'd had Donovan and, and was a new mom in the sense of like, I, he was about a year old, I think about that time. And the irony was we were actually flying back to England when I got the call saying, Hey, do you think you could be at takeover? And I had to shoot that video that's at, I'm in his mom's garden in England shooting this. I'm like, I need to find a space to shoot this thing. And I just had nowhere. Cause we're on at his family's house, you know, like, I'm like, where am I going to shoot this thing? Um, but it was, it was cool. It was exciting. It was, I was honored to be asked to come back. Honestly. Um, I just, I was so, because I guess it was just weird. Cause I go like, it's really ironic because about, you know, two weeks ago, I'd already had the conversation with Nick of like, I think I'm just going to stop taking bookings. I'm going to stop taking, I was just going to quietly just stop taking wrestling bookings. I was like, I just, I think that after this year I'll still do appearances and I might do like a special guest something, but I just don't, uh, you know, I've tried to go back to WWE. They didn't seem really interested. They all, I was offered like a trainer role for a while or just to try out and see if I liked it. And I kind of was like, I'm not ready to be a trainer yet. Like I'm, still young, you know, and then had D and then done so much stuff with impact. And I kind of, yeah, I was just like, I don't really know. And, um, yeah, that was when I got the call when I would just kind of come to that headspace of like, yeah, I just think I'm just going to figure out what's next. That's where I was at. I was like, I'm going to figure out what's next. And then that kind of fell out of nowhere. And so of course I was like, actually, this is really cool. I was like, I really want to do this because if nothing else, this could be that last match. This match right. with could be like, I would be happy with coming back one last time and just doing NXT. And that could be that one last match. And then anything after that could just be like a special appearance, something like that. If I did anything, but mostly that's really cool. And then out of that, like, I guess, because, you know, we, we had a chance to really, and I had, you know, to build a really cool 
moment, I think. And it was awesome for me to be able to go back to Toronto because obviously I have so much history there with that crowd because of Trish and my storyline there. I just think like all the pieces fell together for me after I'd just kind of gone like, okay, that's cool. Like whatever it is, what it is. It, then they kind of like came together for me. And then out of that, I got asked to come back full time. And, uh, I was like, and it's so weird because I had already, we had just moved to Florida because I just thought like, Oh, we're just going to move to Florida and Nick is still wrestling. And I can start like working on like a business and something down here to kind of open and like get our roots down. Cause he really loves Florida. And, and so had our horses there, the whole thing. And then it's like, Oh yeah, well we want you to come back on the road full time. When well, my whole family's in Virginia I'm everybody, I'm like, we're like, like, I've settled in the space, like thinking I'm not wrestling anymore. Right. <laughs> so yeah, we ended up, of course I, I was like, yes, of course. Like my, like, yes. Cause in my mind I go like, yes, this is God. This is what I prayed about. Like I can come back. I can make, come back and make an impact and kind of go out the way I want. I can, this, this is it. Like, this is amazing. I'm so, and it was, I had some really awesome stuff that I did. You know, I, I really did some cool stuff. And I think the ability to be able to go back and work with those girls and they're so talented and I love them. I love that locker room so much. Um, it was cool. It was just like, you know, the last you, few years was just a bit like, oh, I've just been kind of, and, and whether it due to my, my first injury ever, like that actually caused me to get time off with my knee. Like however, 20 years in the business, this is my first, that was my first sur surgery. And I think that's, that was really cool to, uh, go that long without really getting hurt. Like I've been hurt. We've all been hurt, you know, but to, to have to take time off for that, to take real time off from anything like that was my first nose, but it was also a good setback. Cause I go like, Ooh, you're not indestructible. And you know, this is out of nowhere. And I was just like, damn it. And it was unfortunate because it was also at a house show. So nobody even saw it except for the people in Texas, you know, yep. at the that show that day that got, and it was right after I got uh, switched over to SmackDown. And it was just ironic because all this stuff started happening right after, like, it was like that first conversation of like, hey, we, I would really like you to kind of consider like maybe if you would help in the producing side and that side. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Like, awesome. yeah, I would definitely consider that. I, I think that I've always wanted to transition in that space, but I think that I would really want to do some type of outro or something just so I can go like, okay, that's it. And then move over or whatever. And then, the draft happened and I never debuted on television. Then I got hurt at the house show and I'm just like, so then for, I didn't realize what went into an ACL, you know, injury or the rehab. I'm thinking like, okay, this sucks, but I'll be back in six months. And there's like, no, it's nine months before you can even think about it. You know? So it's just like all these things that I'm like, Whoa, it's crazy. That was crazy. in the rehab and all that. And I worked so hard to try to get, in a space to come back and be like, okay, this is going to be it. So I'll just big, have this big comeback moment and like do whatever. And then I really want to do. And then as I'm sitting back going like, okay, well, and I tried doing the commentary thing and I was like, you're asked to do like, well, why don't, why don't you commentary? And I'm like, yeah, I'll commentary. I don't know if I'm any good at it, but I'll try it, you know? And, you know, I had fun with that and I'm Vic and Byron, they were amazing to help like guide me and stuff through that. And it was definitely a learning experience because that job is way more difficult than people realize. Uh, so mad respect and kudos to anyone who puts on the commentary headgear. Um, but yeah, it was fun. And I felt like I was getting better and growing in that, but I still wanted to, I, my, I think my, my, I still, my hope was as soon as my knee was healed, I want to go back in and tangle it up for one. You know what I mean? And do whatever that is. And if we can build a character and make a character on the way out or do something, some type of cool business on the way out, that would be cool for me. Right. Just thinking wrestler brain. Right. And that's just it. You, we never get out of the wrestling brain. Right. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. But, and I think this too, even the girls show is like something that I pitched around of like, I feel like, you know, we had all the tools or the, there between the talent and the cameras and the location. And it literally would have been like, Hey, let's do this thing. And, and the network and everything was already there. And we did already cultivate shows for a male, like for the male specific audience that women really didn't work showcase at all on. Um, and I know like, obviously every promotion has done like an all female show and all female pay-per-view and all that stuff. But it's always like one of those like one-off things, you know, it, and I just was like, I really feel like there's a space where people 
want to see this and more directed to them. And it's like, it's a niche audience. Obviously it's not going to grab everybody, but it would grab the same amount of people that are probably watching some of these other shows that are kind of cultivated just for them. So I don't know, but I'm getting a chance to do it now. So it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was it weird though in WB like, hey, we want you to be a producer. Hey, we want you to train. Hey, we want you to do commentary. But you're like you're still in your prime. So is that kind of weird? I'm like, their part are you in your head? You're like, wait, I could still wrestle. Well, what do you what do you mean yeah, all this all think, other stuff? Well, and I think that would happen to anyone in that space. And I'm sure there was obviously some of that because I'm like, well, wait. Uh, I still, but I still want to do this one last thing. And I thought that's what we were doing. We kind of talked about that. So I've kind of thought that, that was always the plan. And I'm happy to, cause it would be cool to try like, okay, if I am good at commentary, that is a cool role to step into. Like there's been, you know, uh, King's done it. Booker's done it. Like, and they're incredible at it and be able to cross over and do that and have that personality. I just, it, for me, it was a step back when I go like, okay, now I have to watch wrestling differently because I've only watched it through the lens of wrestler. You know, I've not watched it as someone, as an analyst or someone that's sitting there going through and explaining the moves or why and all these things. There's a certain art to that, you know? So I was like, okay, well, I got to watch the, watch the product from different eyes um, rather than the wrestler brain who's just sitting there going like, especially my matches, I nitpick them apart. So like any of the matches, I'm like, Ooh, that was cool. Or, uh, I wonder why they didn't do this this way. Or, you know, that's my analytical brain. So anyway, that was just different. I think it was, obviously we all go, especially if you want that last thing, or if you're looking for that, there's always that itch of like, okay, yeah, that's cool. I love that. But I still want to, to do this one thing that, that was, you know, or that one thing that we talked about that I thought we, that was the agree, like that was what we agreed on, but it's, it's not. And it's, that's just one of those things that happen because it's like, as their storylines move so quickly, everything moves so quickly, you know? And so I think that there's so many moving parts that they always don't, everyone doesn't really get a chance to communicate. And, and so not everyone is always on the same page. And I feel like that might've been my biggest bit is that I didn't have the, huge conversation with perhaps just Vince himself and just go like, I thought we were doing this and this is what I want to do. And this is really like, whatever you want to do, let's do it. But can we do this first? And I, but I also thought that we had had those conversations on a different level. So I don't know, not saying all like, you know, all the craziness, but. With yeah. them and, and obviously, you know, the release, were you shocked by, by the release at that point when you did get released? Cause it seemed to me to be a bit shocking. Um, I wasn't, you know, I, I sit back and I go like, I really wasn't. And I, nothing really shocks me anymore as far as when, cause this business is crazy, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. we're all crazy in it. That's the, <laughs> like, <laughs> this business is crazy and we might all be crazy in it. No, it wasn't shocking. I think that I feel that we had all, I felt like I had just kind of come to the conclusion that they weren't like, they weren't going to give me the out that I really hoped for, for whatever reason. And that was okay. And I also had had a realization over the WrestleMania weekend that they weren't, I probably wasn't going to be able to get this girl's thing pushed through either. Like there wasn't a, a genuine interest or where nobody really kind of saw it. I probably, if I would have kept plugging away, plugging away, plugging away a couple years down the road, I might be able to get it pushed through. You know what I mean? Like that was mm -hmm. kind of like, if I was like, <sighs> so then I felt like, almost in a space of um well then what is it you know like is is this whatever i'm going to do there is that going to fulfill me and is that going to make me happy or am i going to feel like i settled and i never want to feel like i settled so i think that we had just come to the realization that they we weren't there wasn't really a compromising space so i wasn't shocked about it i think that we you know and that's unfortunate, but it doesn't make me not love my experience and my people there. And a lot of the stuff that I did do there, it just, it's just unfortunate because I just had a different vision of it, but that's, right. just, that's just it. And that, and that's okay. You know what I mean? I'm not like bitter about it. It's just like, meh, that sucks. You know? Yep. I know you talked about it a million times too, like the trash back to me. That was just so crazy to me because, like, is that really how they do it? And apparently, a few of the uh, other people have been released, like, oh, yeah, that, that's how they do it. It's like, wait, that's how they send back 
yeah. talents, like personal belonging. To me, I was like shocked. To me, I know nothing shocks you in wrestling, but I was like, what the hell? What? Yeah. Well, and I, th- I didn't even, you know, I think that we get so used to craziness or whatever. I had, I had almost forgot how offensive that was. You know what I mean? Right. In right. a real space. But then you look at some people and they go like, I don't see what the big deal is. Like, it's just trash bag. And I'm like, okay, but we're talking like thousands of dollars of gear in this trash bag. And I understand, this is me going like, I understand the reason of let's, I don't want this box to get left out on the porch and get in a pouring down rainstorm and then all this stuff to get damaged because it's not in a plastic bag. But there's also Ziplocs and all that stuff. And most of my stuff, because I have OCD, is all in Ziplocs with the exception of like belts and boots and jackets. But all my gear were in their separate little Ziplocs and stuff. Um, But I, that's how, I think that's been like a thing of how they've done it for so long that it was just a thoughtless, it was just tone deaf. And I think that I kind of posted it and I had, you know, not just reservations about posting it because I like, I feel like this is going to come off as bitter and ugly and I'm not trying to be that way. But at the same time, I'm like, this is exactly like the thoughtlessness that I'm talking about. Like this is like represents it in a freaking nutshell, you know? in this one thing. And what I thought was powerful because I go like, I have, I zero doubt in my mind that Vince has z- no idea that that's yeah. how they send the talent, their stuff. He doesn't know that. Why would he know that? You know, like, yep. so, but it's frustrating when you feel like you're blocked from conversations for him to have a direct conversation to say some things or to say it because there's this channel of like power of like whatever that you have to get through in order to have that conversation to then go, this is, this sucks. Like, this is not cool, you know? And because also because I look at myself from, you know, talent and this obviously doesn't happen to the men as much because the men don't have drawers with their gear. Cause you know, girls, we have to have changes of outfits, whether it's like TV gear, wrestling gear, all these things. And unless they have like huge jackets or like those big pieces, which usually kind of stay in like a road case, you know, kind of thing, then they don't, they don't get their stuff like that. And I got my stuff like that 10 years ago. Obviously there's been a, a laundry list of girls have all gotten their stuff. If you had a drawer, you probably got your stuff like that. Um, I didn't even, wasn't like that personally offended by it. It was more of like, Oh, this pretty much sums it up. Like in a nutshell, like in a sarcastic Mickey James, sarcastic sort of way. Um, and it was the people who got like, floored by it and you just I mean I think because we're I've been in the business so long is that you just forget like you're so we're so desensitized to you know craziness so to me it wasn't like oh, how dare they send me my shit in a trash bag it was just more like yep this about sums it up for the you know like what you know it's funny it's well I don't but I'm like and that's why I was like I honestly I kept away from doing media at first when it first happened because it went on, like it took off. And I was like, this is the one, everybody wants to talk about this freaking trash bag thing. And I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to be the bag lady. That's not what I want my career to be <laughs> about this freaking trash bag. Like, I'm glad that no, I'm glad that they took action and recognized that it's not a cool thing to do to talent as you're asking them to leave. Because me, and I think about this, we talk about mental health. We talk about all these other things. Mickey James, in 2010 when i got my stuff in a trash bag was devastated like and this is before social media before all those things i was already in a bad place i was heartbroken my dream was taken away it was all these things and you go like they think i'm trash so i think now you know as we have like a lot of girls who are sometimes younger on the talent list or whatever and they're they're perhaps not mentally strong enough to understand like this is just thoughtless behavior. It's not how the company truly, I don't think that they truly think I'm trash. You know what I mean? It was just a, we got to get this stuff out, you know, and put the names on the right bag. So they go to the right people. That's literally what it is, you know? So, <clears throat> but the fact that there wasn't even like any going like, Oh, this might not look optics wise good, you know, because yep. there is the power of social media now, you know? And I just, yeah. So I'm happy that no other girl, or guy will ever have to deal with that if that was going to hurt their feelings or affect them in some way, because it did affect me then. Like it did put some like salt in an open wound. But this time I was just like, uh, I'm a different person now, you know, like that is the, that is the true art of growth. It was just, you know, yeah. I, like, oh, whoa. I did not expect that. I did yeah. not. I, yeah. 
Triple right. H apology, Stephanie apology, Corano fired, Vince apology. I mean, no. got, well, got out there. I have remorse about, you know, Corano getting fired and I shouldn't, you know, if he was not happy in that position, but Mark was my friend, you know, I'd had a lot, I had a lot of conversations with Mark about some of these things that were bothering me in there. So, you know, I, you look at it and go like, yeah. And, and the, the fact that, you know, Johnny and, and Hunter, you know, apologized in the, in the sense and, and that was cool but it was also I, I their their language was very similar and i think that stephanie taking the time to like write a true you know a genuine apology in the sense of like i love stephanie and i have so much respect for her in the business and i think what she's been trying to do and and really put forward is is make changes in the and the way women are perceived in business and and all these things and you know it's not like a one person battle that's just it like it, like any of these things, it's like, it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And, you know, I love Vince and I'm grateful. And I think that, you know, the fact that Vince personally called and apologized to me, like I've moved on from it in the sense. And that's why I really want to move away from it because I've moved on for it. I'm grateful that that won't happen to anybody, but I honestly genuinely don't, I'm not mad at the company as a whole. I'm disappointed because I want it so much more, but I also understand their business of like, they're also have what they want, you know? So it's, it's all good. It's just, I think it's cool for me to be in a, in a powerful position now and to be out of this thing of like what it looked like a huge door closing for me. I have a huge brand new, so many opportunities like unfolding before me to like make a genuine change in the way that I had hoped for but just in a different space. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, cool. Yep. Gotcha. Just uh, interesting because you know that you're probably going to get the Hall of Fame nod in a few years. So, you know, to me anyway, I'll I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, <laughs> no. I was, is, I was right. I mean, like, there's so many women that belong in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, even before me. So I think any but any time that anyone talks about Hall of Fame, I go like, oh, I don't know. You know, I think I've had some really, really cool moments, but I also know there's a lot of women that have, you know, has a, a lot of cool moments too that deserve to be in there. So for sure. Now yeah. also wanted to mention this just because we kind of mentioned Trish briefly before that feud is great. Just from a few different perspectives in the ring and then storyline wise, because you had the psychology thing and then you had like, is this a lesbian storyline? Is this like, is she messing with her getting her head? But also in the ring, it was, it was such a, a good contest. You guys always had great chemistry and drew very well too. I mean, it was a very, very prominent feud for a long time for yeah. WWE. Yeah, I'm so uh, excited and happy or blessed, I should say, about that whole thing. Because um, even at the time I was grinding on in developmental uh, two and a half years and, and just kind of like really, really hoping. And it was in this weird transition of the business of like the diva search and all these things that started because I had gotten in as a wrestler wanting to be the wrestler, right? Like wanting to kind of make do that. And I think with the angle and I, and I think about all the times that I was supposed to debut that I did debut with CM Punk and got pulled from TV and all these things of wanting and almost quitting in OVW. Cause I realized like, I feel like the business, like it's always gone on these little roller coasters. And I was like, I feel like it's going on this space where they don't even want female wrestlers right now. And this is what I've dedicated the last, you know, seven, eight years of my life to. And I don't know if I'm even going to get a chance to, cause I would see my friends get let go in OVW and like, I'm like this kind of, I don't know what to do. Like I want to wrestle and I want to be the best. And I feel like even right now, like they don't even want me because I am a good wrestler. Like, so this is, you know, me, young Mickey James thinking. And so, and all of that, I think the, the, the fact that I was able to come in and work with Trish, who I didn't really know up until that point, you know, and with this, really amazing storyline. And when you talk to a lot of the girls today and, and it's a really humbling thing of like in the locker rooms and stuff to, to know that that was the storyline that drew them and made them fans or one of the things like of, and it's still talked about as one of the greatest storylines of all time. And I know, you know, you look at the matches and a whole, and I thought the match is amazing and it's solid, but it was really about more than the match, right? Like that was one of the few times that a women's storyline was invested in for months over television to build these two characters, to build to this moment, to where people were genuinely emotionally 
invested in both characters into the story they wanted to see rather than just the match, you know? Um, and I think that's where, you know, that was the difference maker. It wasn't a hot shot match that was built up over the matter of three weeks. It was a, an angle, uh, a story that had developed and invested in and, and taken the time to get to this moment almost I debuted in October, October 9th, 2005, and all the way to April, we get to get to that moment. And that, I think that the, the, the fact that that much time was put into the development of my character and aligned with Trish right out of the start, who, what, who is still, you know, the golden, the golden goose, like it leveled me up to where that, that like, it put me at, at in such a high position to that. That's where my career went so all those other things that like happened that didn't happen that were taken away i'm like this is why because i had there were bigger plans this was going to be and i'm over prepared now because now i've fine-tuned every aspect of my craft and now i could literally do anything they throw at me and i think it was that beautiful art of the sexuality being thrown in and the different elements but the fact that we then when we wrestled we delivered and that was, you know, yeah, there's a lot of times there's like these elements thrown in, but then the wrestling doesn't deliver or is not the elements, but the match is just like, you know, uh, incredible, you know, but it was a beautiful blend of all these like seasonings and things to make this perfect, perfect, like bucket of gold, pot of gold. <laughs> and it was great too like psychologically because like you, you know you do the mistletoe thing but it all leads up to oh she tricked her like kind of mentally and got in her head and then she wins the world title so it's like yeah. it le led to something it was building up in a, in a nice way yeah it was it was beautiful and i'm so i always say like i'm so grateful for that and i think that had my uh any of those things that were supposed to happen before how different my career would have been you know how, like what I think that I would have always risen and because there is truth in that, like the cream always rises to the crop, the top, the cream always rises to the top. Yes. The cream <laughs> crop. Yep. I'm thinking about my garden outside the crop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my little garden is doing well. I got corn, pumpkin, uh, watermelon, Brussels sprouts, green beans, tomatoes, strawberries, cucumbers, oh. whatever you want. Although nice. I'm not very good with lettuce because my lettuce keeps overgrowing. However, I digress. No, but I think that it was just, it was just a cool, cool thing. As we hit the wind down, head towards the finish. Want to mention GAWTV, the grown ass woman. Yes. What's, going, what's going on over there? I know Fred Rosser recently on. Um, You know, uh, we started that like over a year ago. We're just a year in. And we started it during, obviously, the pandemic. I'm sitting at home. You know, obviously, I was sitting at home, last bit of rehab on my knee, but also not really doing anything on television. So it's kind of like, I'm bored at home. But we had always talked separately, Lisa and I, Val and I. We have, Our worlds have always crossed wrestling. That's what we do. We always circle and cross. And we were just like, let's just, it'll be fun. Let's just do it for fun. And let's just see what happens. We'll just get on the thing and we'll we'll try it. We'll do Val's so good at hosting and, and presenting and doing these types of shows. And I think, you know, with all of our different places of how where we come from in the business and, you know, our backgrounds and how we got in and then where we were at the time. I mean, Lisa was retired. Val is in the UK, but still very much working like as a presenter and a host for both like fashion and fight TV and um commentating or she was over there and then um uh, i'm obviously was still under the roster but as an active mom but still with a different perspective of the locker room than i did you know so with this just all these different conversations that we could have but in a real unique space and with our friends that felt like you were just you know we've driven you know 300 miles and gotten to the next town and we're in our hotel and our pjs and drinking wine and talking about wrapping up the whole day you know, so that's kind of what we do. And then it's just grown so much. It's doing, we have a podcast now, the Gawcast. Um, obviously we do, a, we've kind of, as the, in the growing, we've kind of edited, like figured it out. Like, so we have a, a show that we do on Wednesdays. That's like a 30 minute episode that we're live in the chat room for the YouTube. And then we do a Patreon after party for all of our subscribers to kind of wrap up the show in general and then answer questions live. Um, we do the full 
unedited version on the Patreon to all of our subscribers, like, you know, with ad free, but also the video. But now we've turned and put that in full audio form for free from the podcast um, to be able to do a different show over there. So it's just cool. And it's just learning curves, but yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on with that. Um, and it's been amazing and it's cool to have these conversations with my girlfriends cause I love them so much and we have different, you know, it's just funny to get our different opinions on different things, you know, cause Val is such a girly's girl and yep. you know, never wants to write. Like she's always like Miss Elizabeth is her thing. Like that's was her idol. And that where I'm like, no, it's sensational Sherry for me. And I'm, a tomboy. I still love the girly girl aspects, but I'm also a tomboy and Lisa's very much a tomboy in the same, you know what I mean? But it's, it was just, it's just fun to do. And so our last, we've been celebrating pride month all month long. And our guest last week was obviously Fred Rosser, which um, I just saw at the NWA tapings as well. And so grateful he's a part of NWA and he's doing great stuff with new Japan, but it was just cool to get his story and uh, from a real authentic space and just kind of just talk about, you know, what he's doing now and uh, how he's thriving and all that good stuff. And he's amazing. And uh, we've had some really cool conversations with some random, some in wrestling, some outside of wrestling. And that's cool things because we don't have to stick to wrestling, right? We talk to drag queens. We've talked to musicians and TV stars and reality television stars and obviously our friends in the locker room and all kinds of people. So, um, yeah, it's fun. We love it. Also wanted to mention legacy subs. What's going on with the latest there? You guys yeah. are doing you guys are killing it right now. Oh, we are doing really, really well. I will say that. Um it's been so Nick started Legacy Subs. We we say we started together, but Nick started Legacy Subs at the beginning of the year. Um, and it was obviously driven towards the female the the men, the men's workout, like test boosters and stuff like that. Cause he he's obsessed. Like he's written if, if you don't know, like Nick has written a book. Um, and he studies fitness. He's, he was a personal trainer earlier, like before wrestling champion, all that stuff. Like he's always been obsessed about working out, about lifting, about all these things. And I think it was because it was his ability to change the way he looked, you know, he wasn't naturally, you know, he's, he was t more of like, he says swimmer's body. Cause that's what he was doing. He was swimming and he was doing all these things. And so he had to work hard and he started working out when he was like 13 years old to like get to work out to get into a body shape because of wrestling because of Arnold all these things that that's who he looked up to you know um to be able to look like them you know and I think that he's found a, in studying it he just is, knows so much about it and he teaches me stuff about fitness and, and all that stuff as well and uh he was able to cultivate a line specifically designed for guys like him you know, so, and I think that was really cool. And to be able to, at first we weren't even telling people that it was our company or anything like that. It was just more just building the brand out on its own. And then I was like, you know, I think that people would really like to know, like they would want to know why we're pushing this specific product. Like it, it, then otherwise, cause I think people have become so desensitized to like people trying to shove a product or shove something on them. And they feel like, Oh, it's a paid advert or they're paying you to put this product up or no, this is our company. It's our, you know, and it's kind of grassroots and we're doing it grassroots. Um, and then after I was released, I go, well, like, well, I guess I can do the female line now, you know, yeah. like yeah. I can, really, now I can talk about it a bit more and we can do this female line. And I think it's that we have a real, there's a lot of women's products out there, but you know, most of them are designed to say, Hey ladies, here's how you lose weight or Hey ladies, take this. And, and it's always like these, like kind of not like false advertisement, but in a sense of like, it's not really designed specifically. And there's not a whole lot of products that were designed for the female athlete or people who are looking to be that. And so like, so why don't we, I would like to be able to, you know, take this and like, let's look at a lot like these products and like, look at that and build out a line for the women. So we can have, and that's when we just launched her legacy. So we just got these amazing products in that are, I helped name them nice. the Herminator. <laughs> simmer down. The Herminator is the fat burner, the, the fat burner. Um, and the simmer down is a relaxation formula because I, my brain doesn't ever stop. So I need that sometimes. Um, but yeah. What else? The flush is the detox. And then I also obviously have the, the multivitamin and the, um, the women's enhancement boosters. So yeah, she assist. Nice. 
yeah. for everything is going well uh, with legacy stuff. It seems. Yeah, like. it's doing. It's been doing really, really great. And like the last month, we had our best month ever. You know, and so we're hoping to keep making strides and keep building that out. But yeah, it's it's been really. You know, it's growing as it's growing. And and luck, luckily, we have like podcasts like yourself, like you know Conan and like Conrad's done a lot, and like those adverts and, and to get those people to lean on our friends to like help uh, promote the product in a different, different way, because yeah, it's the art of that's a whole nother animal, you know, but it's, yeah. been, and it's doing really, really great. And I think that uh, we have some cool stuff coming up with that as well. So, so what's next for Mickey James? I know NWA is coming up. Anything else uh, um, up about? Gosh, no, that's my main focus, obviously. Uh, is building to St. Louis, building to Empower, to, to NWA 73 and the Chase Ballroom. Um, obviously, I'm going on tour. I know I have some signings and stuff coming up as well, um, but my music tour and really pushing Grown Ass Woman, my new single, um, and being an awesome mom. And I got to work out, lots of working out between now and August. It's my birthday weekend too, so there's going to be a party somewhere in there. Awesome. Nice. And of course, uh, July 10th, of course, in Richmond, Virginia, the Candle Club, uh, going to be uh, you returning to country music. So that's pretty cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. It's going to be amazing. Mickey, thank you uh, so much uh, for all the time. Really appreciate it. No worries. No worries. I appreciate you. Have a good day.